The gene editing revolution has arrived, promising remedies for terminal diseases. The possibilities for this technology are astounding, ranging from treating genetic illnesses to changing food crops to survive pesticides or climate change, or even bringing the dodo back to life as one business boasts. Besides, new genetic technologies introduce significant ethical and practical risks. Some, like bio-warfare, might be terrifyingly dangerous. So how should the promise of genetic technology be weighed against the risks? And who decides whether risks are worthwhile? However, before we discuss gene editing, I'd like to remind you of what our genes are. Our genes are kept in a macromolecule called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short. DNA is also sometimes referred to as the code of life, simply because it's the molecule that holds the information to make up every single organism on this planet. The DNA molecule is also known as the code of life. Since scientists first attempted to decipher the code of life, but this has been impossible for several decades due to a lack of technology to read or sequence DNA. So, it took another 40 years for the first and largest joint bio project, known as the Human Genome Project, to attempt to sequence the first human genome. Planning for the project started after it was adopted in 1984 by the US government. It was declared complete on April the 14th, 2003, and included about 92% of the genome. What the Human Genome Project has taught us is that it is not acceptable to take 13 years and $3 billion to sequence a single human genome. So in the mid-2000s, a number of very clever new DNA sequencing technologies came on the market, known as next-generation sequencing technologies, which allow us to sequence an entire human genome in just two days for $1,000. Today, we live in the post-genomic era. We can sequence the genomes of many animals, the genomes of various people, and the genomes of hereditary illnesses like cancer. Nevertheless, knowing the sequence of a gene or the alterations found in certain diseases does not tell us about the function of that gene or alteration. And this is where the grand challenge for scientists today is to make functional sense of the identified genomic sequences. This is where gene editing comes into play, which is described as the targeted modification of a living organism's genetic material. These technologies allow genetic material to be added, removed or altered at specific locations in the genome. Currently, genome editing is employed in research labs in cells and animal models to better understand diseases. Scientists are still investigating whether this method is safe and effective for usage in humans. Human gene editing in zygotes would be more effective than in adults. To be effective, gene editing must be performed in embryos. Why? That's all there is to it. You have a large number of cells, billions. Embryos have few cells, especially in their early stages. Nonetheless, as you can imagine, there are several ethical concerns about it. Critics of designer babies believe that the technology is unethical and nearly identical to the abortion process. Many of them believe that enhancing human features and attributes should not become a civil society practice. He Zhuangui, a biophysicist in China, thought it would be interesting to experiment with science. And he created the first genetically engineered AIDS-resistant infants. In fact, this scientist has been sentenced to three years in prison and is no longer allowed to apply for research funding or work with human reproductive technologies. There is a reason why it's illegal. When a genetic modification is made to an embryo, it affects nearly all, if not all, of the cells that the person has or will ever have, including reproductive cells. That means the modification will be permanent and will most likely be passed down to future generations. So it's permanent. This is why we must be certain that we understand what we are doing. As previously mentioned, the technology for generating designer babies is still in its early stages, making it potentially dangerous for both the mother and the child. According to some doctors, the technology could cause miscarriage or grave injuries to both mothers and children. Many individuals feel that instead of promoting equality, the production of designer babies will generate inequality and devalue persons with disabilities. 
In this instance, some children will have a greater biological advantage than others. One of the major concerns about designer baby technologies is that it is too expensive for the general public to afford. A simple genetic test may cost more than $200. The issue with designer babies is that as their population grows in size, more people will have the same set of DNA. There will be less variation in the gene pool as a result of this. As a result, the next generation will be predisposed to a variety of diseases. Eliminating sickness and serious impairments is a laudable goal. They should not be endured by anyone. However, eliminating human diversity is not just harmful. It also eliminates perspectives that enrich us. But with great power comes great responsibility, and there are undoubtedly many topics that need to be addressed, as well as many things that we need to understand. Gene editing is fantastic, but we still need to understand everything so that we can use it appropriately in a healthy and safe manner.